Hey, welcome to Drop Academy. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about content organization in Hugo. We're gonna learn about creating a new Hugo content file, and then we're gonna talk about organizing those files, and we'll talk about the different types of content in Hugo. So Hugo breaks down content into two types, and we're gonna look at what those are. The first order of business, though, is to talk about the theme that we're using for this course. Now, if you haven't been following along with the course, it's totally okay, but we're using a custom theme that I built specifically for this course. And so if you want to get that theme and follow along with exactly what I'm doing, check out the link in the description and you can download this GA Hugo theme and follow along. And now let's talk about creating content files in Hugo. This right here is called the content folder and any content that goes on your website. So for example, if you had a blog, uh, any blog posts, or if you just had like a, you know, a basic static website, any of the pages on the site, you wanna store them inside of this content file. We're gonna create a special file for each one of those pages and it's gonna get stored in here. And the way that we create a content file is by opening up a terminal and inside of the terminal, make sure that the terminal is inside of the directory that you wanna create the content file inside of. And we're just gonna type Hugo new, and then we wanna type the name of the file. So actually this is gonna be the, the path of the file. I just wanna create a markdown file inside this content folder. And so I'm just gonna type Hugo new a dot markdown. And we're gonna click enter and you should get a, basically just a message saying that it's created. And if we look over here inside the content folder, you'll see that we have this new file a dot markdown. So let's take a look at this file. When we create the file using that Hugo command, Hugo automatically populates this file with uh, what's called front matter. And we're gonna talk more about front matter in a future video. But for now, just know that front matter is basically just uh, metadata about this piece of content. So it's just uh, information about this file, right? So we have title, we have the data was created, and we have whether or not it's a draft. And I'm just gonna type out, you know, just some content in here. We'll just say this is a.markdown. If you ever used markdown before, you'll know that, you know, inside of here, this is where we wanna put all of our content for the file. And so, uh, what you can also do, instead of just creating a file at the root directory of the content folder, we can also create a file inside of a, a, another directory. And so I could say Hugo new and dir1, so directory1, and then we'll make this b.markdown. So when I create this file, you'll see that Hugo automatically creates a directory inside this content folder and it creates this b.markdown file inside of here. And you'll see that uh, the title for this one is b, you know, it has a different date and it's also a draft and we can just type out some information. This is b, oh, we'll type dir1 forward slash b.markdown, right? So that's uh, where that is. And so with Hugo, you know, generally if you're making a lot of content, you're gonna wanna organize it into these uh, different directories, right? So you don't just wanna have all your pages on, uh, just in this content folder. You wanna have them in subdirectories inside of the content folder. All right, so once you've created a couple of different files, again, if you're using a theme, and I would recommend using this Draft Academy Hugo theme that you can find in the description below if you wanna follow along. Um, if you're using a theme, then you should be able to view these pages uh, inside of your website. And so I'm just gonna come down here into the command line and we're gonna type Hugo server and you wanna add in an extra argument which is hyphen uppercase D. Now the reason we want this hyphen uppercase D is because by default when Hugo creates a new file for you, it sets this draft flag equal to true. And basically all that says is that this is a draft file and so, um, while draft is set to true, if you just type out Hugo server, it's actually not gonna render the draft pages. And so if you have pages that are set to drafts and you wanna see them, then you have to do this hyphen D. So I'm just gonna click enter and we run this Hugo server command and you'll see that it wants to host the site on localhost 1313. And you can also see that two regular pages were created and that corresponds to these two markdown files up here. So once you run this Hugo server command, we can check out our website. So let's head over to a browser and I'm just at localhost 1313. And you'll see that both of the files that we created are showing up here on the homepage. Now, if you're not using the Draft Academy theme, uh, this is probably gonna look a little bit different. But if you are using the Draft Academy theme, you'll see that both that b.markdown file and the a.markdown file are showing up here on the homepage. And so if I click one of them, for example, if I click a, you'll see that we have uh, localhost 1313 and then it's 
going over to this A page, right? So the URL reflects where the file is. And basically this just has um, the title of the page, the date that the page was created, and then the content inside the file. And so if you notice, um, this Draft Academy theme that we're using is actually pulling this information from the front matter, like the title and the date, and it's using it inside of this website. And we'll get more into how you do that later. We can also go over here to this B file, and you'll see up here uh, that the URL reflects the location of this file inside the content folder. And so inside of our content folder, b.markdown is inside dir1, and that's reflected inside the URL. All right, so now's a good time to explain the, the two different types of content in Hugo. Uh, Hugo organizes itself uh, very well, and basically Hugo defines two separate types of content. So Hugo breaks down uh, all the content of a website into two types. And those two types are single pages and list pages. And you'll see here, if you're using this Draft Academy template, that uh, it, it marks down what type of content uh, is currently being viewed. And so list content, which is the type of content that we're currently looking at on the home page is basically content that lists other content on the site. And so you could call this like a list page, right? So the home page, um, which is just, you know, localhost 1313, this is what's called a list page. And it's called that because it's the purpose of this page is to list other pages, right? It acts as like a directory of the website. And so the home page by default will list all of the pages that the site currently offers. And so list pages are really useful. And, and really when you think about it, like all websites can basically be broken into those two types of content, right? List content, which is just listing the pages on the site or listing what's available on the website. And then um, the second type of content is single content. And so if I click on this a.markdown page, this is what's referred to as single content, right? And a single page or a single template as we have up here is basically just like a page that displays information. And so we have these a.markdown and b.markdown files, and those are referred to as single pages, right? They're not listing content, it's the actual content itself. And so, you know, really what you wanna do when you're creating a website is, is try to, you know, break down your content into list pages and, and single pages. So once again, just to recap, uh, if we go back to the home page, this is a list page, right? It's listing out, pages inside of our website. If we go to, for example, this B page, this is a single page because it's an actual piece of content, right? It's displaying what's inside of the markdown file. So as long as that's clear, let's head back over to our text editor. And I wanna sort of get a little bit more advanced into content organization, but in order to do that, I'm gonna have to create more uh, markdown files and more directories. So I'm gonna cut the video, I'm gonna do that really quick, and then we'll pick back up and I'll explain what I've created. All right, so I cut the video and I actually created a few more directories and files. And so what you'll notice is we have this content folder, right? But inside here we have directory one and I created uh, this c.markdown file. And so inside directory one, we have b.markdown and c.markdown. And I also created another directory inside of directory one called directory two. And in here we just have d.markdown. And then in addition to directory one, I created a third directory called directory three, and this has e.markdown and f.markdown. Now, I want to point out that directory one and directory three are both at the top level of the content folder. Directory two isn't at the top directory. It's inside of directory one, and so it's two levels down from the content folder, and that's just kind of uh, going to come in handy later. And so... Now that we have these pages created, I want to run the Hugo server again. So I'm going to type Hugo server uh, hyphen uppercase D, just like we did last time. Now let's head over to our Hugo website and we're going to see what happened. So I'm just going to refresh the page and you'll see that all of the new pages that we created got listed out. And so remember, the home page is a list page. And so it's the, the job of a list page is to just list out the pages on the website. So we have F, E, D, C, B and then A. And so these are all the pages that uh, we currently have inside of this content folder. So if I click on, for example, F, you'll see F is inside dir3, and then we have the slug, which is just F. 
And if I click something like D, you'll see D is inside of dir1, and then it's inside of dir2, and it's inside of D. And so the path of those files get reflected inside of the URL. And so like I said before, Hugo has two types of content, list content and single content. And so automatically single pages were created for all of these different markdown files that we created inside of the content folder. But in addition to single pages being created, there were also list pages that were created. And so if we head over to um, directory one, so if we just type in up here, localhost1313 forward slash dir1, you'll see that there's a list page that was automatically created for this directory one, right? So it, up here, I just have localhost1313 dir1, and this is a list page, and it's listing out all of the pages that are inside of directory one. So inside directory one, we have b.markdown, c.markdown, and then at a lower level, we have d.markdown. So this directory one page is listing out all of the content files that are inside of that directory. We can also come up here, and instead of directory one, we can go to directory three, and you'll see that the same thing happens, right? A, a list page is automatically created for um, directory three. And so you'll notice that like inside directory three, we don't have, like we didn't create a content file for um, this page, right? We didn't create a, like just like a dir three page. That's automatically created by Hugo. However, if we go to dir one forward slash dir two, and you'll remember that there's one file stored in here there's actually not a page that's created for this, right? What you'd expect would be a page that lists out just d.markdown, right? But unfortunately, that's not the case. And the reason why is because Hugo will automatically create a list page for directories that are at the root level of the content folder. And so directory one is uh, just at the root directory of the content folder, and so is directory three. However, directory two isn't. Remember, directory two is one level down. And so just by default, Hugo isn't going to create a list page for that. So if you want to have a list page for directory two, you have to create it manually. And the way that we do that is by creating an index.markdown file. What we can do is we can type out Hugo new, and this is in directory one, and then directory two. And we want to make a new file called index.markdown. And it has to be named just like this. So it has to be underscore index dot markdown. If it's not named underscore index at markdown, then this isn't going to work. So I'm just going to click enter and you'll see that a new file called index dot markdown got created here. Now, by default, the title of this is going to be underscore index. I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just going to give this a title of dir2. And so what you'll notice is now when we go back over to our website, actually, I need to run the server again. And when we head back over to our website, there didn't used to be a page, a list page for dir2, but now when we refresh, you'll see that there is a list page for dir2. And it's just listing out um, all the files that are inside. And there's only one file in here, which is just d.markdown. What you can also do is we could add content here. So I'm in this index.markdown file, and I could just um, add some content. And you'll notice that that content shows up um, in this list page, okay? And so that's basically how you would go about creating a list page um, for directories that aren't at the root directory of the content folder, okay? What you can also do is overwrite the pages that are automatically created. So um, this dir1 page right here, let's say I wanted to add some content um, on top of here, let's say I wanted to add some of my own custom content. I could create a new Hugo file. So I could basically type like Hugo new um, dir1 forward slash index.markdown. And you'll see that inside of directory one and index.markdown page got created. And I'm just going to change the title to dir1. And I could add some custom content. And when I head back over to the directory one page, you'll see that that custom content shows up. And so, you know, automatically Hugo will create this 
list template because dir1 is at the root directory of the content folder. But if you want, you can override the file that was created automatically and add your own content in it just like that. So that's, so that's basically you know, an overview of creating content in Hugo. And again, in order for this to work where you just create content, you have to, you have to be using a theme. And depending on the theme that you're using, um, different content is gonna show up in different ways. So if you're using this Draft Academy theme uh, that we're using for this course, then the content that you created here is gonna work perfectly. If you're using a different theme, however, sometimes um, you have to put your content in a specific folder or a specific directory inside this content folder for it to show up correctly for that theme. So depending on the theme you're using, you wanna make sure that you understand how content needs to get created in that theme. But all of the basic principles apply, right? So we talked about list pages and we talked about single pages and, and we talked about uh, creating a custom list page using this underscore index.md. All of that's still gonna work no matter what theme you're using. So now you should really have a, you know, at least a decent understanding of creating and organizing your content in Hugo. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.